Well, hey there, everyone. Thank you so much for checking out the Leading Edge podcast. I'm your host, Eric Thompson. This right here is episode number five. And I guess, you know what? This is a real life thing. Uh, here we go with number five. And uh, just appreciate all the nice feedback I've had, all the engagement. And it's fantastic. And really am grateful for you tuning into this one. This one's called The Art of Pre-Framing. And we will certainly get into, so what, what the heck does that mean in the first place? What the heck does pre-framing mean? We'll get into all that. I'll tell you that when done right, when pre-framing is done right, uh, people will be predisposed to do the things that you want them to do. All right. So this is uh, the art of pre-framing so that people are predisposed to do the things that you want them to do. For all my realtor friends who are tuned in and listening to this, this most certainly applies to listings and to new listing prospects, potential listing clients. And I tell you what, if you ever struggle with um, losing out to other people, other companies, if you ever ever struggle with um, uh, people, potential clients who keep asking you about your fee, and if you find you're ever having a discount, all this that we're going to talk about most certainly applies. And this applies to things over and above just listings too. This will also apply even just to life, all right? Um, the reason why I put this together is that just this last week, I was with three different groups of realtors hosting workshops, uh, just had a ball at each one, covered some various topics, but this is one of the topics that we covered in each one of those three workshops. And what I noticed was people who were in the audience and who were part of the workshop listening in and, and engaging um, in the workshop, they really got a lot out of this. They got a, a lot out of this part. I could just see light bulbs going off. I could see that this was all of a sudden being really helpful, super enlightening, and, and that this was going to cause them to be uh, more helpful to their clients and put them in a much stronger position. It was really helping out their mindset. So that's why I wanted to turn this into this week's podcast, uh, just based on their reaction. So I'm hoping that it helps you just like it helped them. Uh, when we talk about pre-framing, the psychology behind this and the psychological term is something you may have heard about before. It's called the primacy effect, the primacy effect. Uh, so, you know, maybe you can't like spout off the definition of that, but I'm guessing you may have heard about that at least, you know, back in, back in school or maybe you've read some business book that talks about the primacy effect. Um, I'll give you the definition, right? So I did a little research on Wikipedia, good old Wikipedia, before doing this podcast. And this is what uh, Wikipedia had to say. So what they say related to the primacy effect is that first impressions disproportionately influence how we interpret and remember both information and people. Uh, I'll say that one more time. So first impressions disproportionately influence how we interpret and remember both information and people. And the deal is, and this is also coming from Wikipedia, the deal is people resist changing opinions once they are formed. And isn't that true? Isn't that the case? Uh, can't you think about yourself too? Like once you get an opinion uh, embedded in your brain, doesn't it become super hard to ever change that? Why is that? That's because the brain doesn't like to change because uh, that requires a ton of energy. And the brain really isn't into expending lots of unnecessary energy. The brain would rather expend the least amount of energy possible so that it survives. That's kind of what's what's going on with the brain. So uh, people just naturally are going to resist change. So once that opinion is formed, it becomes uh, embedded, kind of um, you know solidified in their brain, and it's super hard to ever change an opinion. So pre-framing is really all about forming the opinion. So it, it really is about the question, why not help someone form an opinion instead of something else helping them to form the opinion, all right? We, we have the ability to help them form an opinion first, right up front, rather than something or someone else forming that opinion. Because if we get that out of our control and we let something or someone else form that opinion, then we're going to have a super hard uh, time ever changing that. Um, some easy, quick examples. So I, I think in a simple example that comes up for me in the real estate world is a referral, right? So when one of your past clients refers you to one of their friends, 
they most certainly are going to be saying really nice things about you. Like, you know what? You have got to talk to him. Uh, he's great. He's fantastic. He did a really good job for us. He's really nice to work with. He's a total pro. You know, so imagine them getting that feedback about you. And um, that becomes embedded in their brain before they ever reach out and, and contact you, right? So you, you now would, would actually have to work pretty hard to be anything different than what they've already conjured, conjured you up to be in their brain, right? So uh, that's why referrals are so wonderful um, because our past clients say all these great things about us. And then um, that's the opinion that, that goes into their brain. I think another one you can think about is, is a really nice restaurant. Julie and I were lucky enough to go to a really nice restaurant back a few weeks ago. Uh, we were celebrating um, the anniversary of us meeting one another 15 years ago. And we went to a really nice restaurant. And how they pre-framed the whole evening, they did a couple of things. One is they sent me a really nice email ahead of time. And they wanted to know, number one, was there any special occasion? So we told them, celebrating 15 years together uh, is when we first started dating. And now we're, of course, married, but we, we were celebrating that. Then they asked us about food allergies, right? So they they were demonstrating that, they number one, they really cared about us. And then also that they were uh, going to take care um, take care of us and, and that they wanted to be prepared, that they were true pros. That's the impression that I was getting when I got that email. Then when, when we showed up to dinner, the waiter right away uh, made reference to the food allergies or food preferences that we had mentioned in that email. And so then it kind of reinforced that like, wow, these guys, they really do have their act together. Not only did they send the email, they also read the email and they're on top of things, right? So you, you get the idea. So they like all at once, we had this great impression being built e even before we stepped foot in the restaurant, even before any food was put in front of us really before we had the chance to experience really anything, we already had a very strong opinion formed. Another example that comes to mind is our kids right now in school, and we had a conversation the other night about their teachers and who might be the teachers that they get next year. And our kids right now are in fourth and third grade and they immediately started spouting off, well, gosh, I, I hope I get so-and-so next year and I hope I don't get so-and-so next year because I've heard this or I've heard that about that person. So, you know, those teachers, when the kids show up on day one, most likely the, those kids already have an opinion of those teachers, right? And those, those teachers would have to work pretty hard to overcome that opinion that the kids already have. So the kids already have opinions about those teachers because of an older sibling or they have older friends in the school or there's just some reputation going around the school about that teacher, Right, so those are all examples of the primacy effect. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to tell you in detail two personal examples here, and I think this is really going to help drive this point home. And then we're going to get into so how do we apply this? All right, so how do how do we apply this to our business? How do we turn this into more business for us, or a, you know, better experience for us, better experience for our clients? We'll get into that. But I thought it'd be fun to share two personal examples i just kind of went through some quick examples but I'll, I'll give you two more detailed examples here and these are really fun so the first one is me meeting julie so julie is my amazing wife and as i mentioned before we've been together now for 15 years 15 years ago is when we started dating well what a lot of people don't know is that we met on a blind date uh, so we first met on a blind date so this was you know, back a while ago before there was anything like Match.com or, you know, anything like that. And, and also, by the way, before Facebook. And so how the blind date came about is that a woman that was working for me at the time um, knew that, uh, you know, I obviously knew that I was single. I was, you know, kind of on the market, so to speak. She knew I was single. And, and so she comes into my office one day, uh, closes the door. You know, in my head, I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, she's going to either quit or she's going to ask for a raise. What's going on here? And she starts telling me about Julie. She says, hey, there's a friend of mine, Eric, that you have to meet. Her name is Julie. Here's a little bit about her. So she started describing Julie and she talked about, you know, just what a great person that she is, uh, how smart she is, how funny she is, how she's really into the outdoors. She's an amazing athlete. Uh, how she's just an all-around terrific person. 
Uh, she's really attractive and just just fantastic, right? And so I'm listening to Mary tell me about Julie, and I'm saying, um, yeah, heck yeah, I, I would I would like to meet her. That's that's a great idea. Would you please give me her phone number? Um, so you know, I, I so then I called Julie to set up the blind date, and so before we ever met, I had. Um, you know, pre cause some, uh, there'd been some pre-framing going on, right? So Julie was pre-framed to me by Mary. So I was predisposed to already really, really like her. And I was certainly predisposed to want to get to know her more and, and very much looking forward to this date to meet, meet this amazing person, all because of everything I heard from Mary. So it, I did not have the chance to you know, go on Facebook and do some Facebook stalking of her or, you know, find out anything really online about her because back then you you couldn't do that. So I was only relying on Mary. But based on everything that Mary told me about her, you know, I, I was in. I certainly wanted a, a date and hopefully wanted a second date with her before I had even met her. So when Julie showed up at that date, certainly she was all those things and more. And what's funny, going to the primacy effect is that she would have had to work pretty hard to be any, anything other than that because of the kind of the image and perception of her that I, I had already built up in my head. And then lucky for me, though, it was not only was she all those things, she was all that and even more. And here we are today, several years later, happily married. Right. So that that's one example of this primacy effect at play. The, the second example is, I think, super interesting. This is a, a really fun story. This was uh, four years ago. So our kids right now are 10 and eight, four years ago. Um, you can do the math. You know, our kids are six and four. Four years ago, my mother-in-law calls us and she's an amazing person. She calls us and says, hey, if you can get yourself to Fort Lauderdale, Florida, I will pay for your family to go on a cruise and not just any cruise, but a cruise on the Disney boat. And of course, our heads like, exploded of course we said um yeah okay deal we are in sign us up for that that is a um a pretty fair deal if you ask me pretty terrific fantastic deal so certainly we said yes to that offer that julie's mom gave to us and she was so um so generous to make that offer to us so we had never been on a cruise before you know let alone been on a disney boat cruise before and so for those of you that don't know the disney cruise is probably regarded as one of the very best cruises you could ever go on you know lots of great cruises out there disney um, no surprise takes this to a whole nother level so i i want you to you know as we think about this now tying back to business, I told you a personal story about Julie, but now tied to business. If you're Disney and uh, you know the Thompsons are coming on the Disney boat for a four-day cruise, what what is it that you want them to already think? You know, how do you want them pre-framed? How do you want them predisposed? You know, what what do you want them predisposed to do? We'd, we'd already signed up to go on the cruise, so it's not like they have to... to, to have to convince us to go on this cruise in the first place. But the, there is some pre-framing opportunities here and there is some predisposing opportunities. So if you're Disney, what is it that you would, you would want us to do? You want us predisposed to do what? Well, you probably want us predisposed to uh, tell our friends about it, even in advance about how excited we are. You want us predisposed to give recommendations after the fact and maybe give you know, ratings after the fact. You want us predisposed to like shout from the rooftops. What an incredible experience this is. You want us predisposed to have a good time, wouldn't you, right? If you're if you're running this cruise ship, you want everyone on the cruise ship kind of showing up expecting to have a good time because that is makes it even more likely that people on the ship are all going to be there happy and, and having a good time, right? You also, if you think about it, you want them predisposed to feel really safe and secure. You want them predisposed to think that Disney really has their act together. Um, you want them to feel um, comfortable, you know, and I mean that in a, in a safety way, because you know if everyone feels that way getting on the ship, that will create just a really nice vibe on the ship. So, you know, take it to the other extreme. If, if people showed up on the ship and they felt no safety at all, if they were unsure about things from a safety sense, that's going to create a vibe on the ship 
that you wouldn't want if if you were Disney, right? So you want to create this perception and, and have this pre-framing going on so that people are predisposed to give recommendations, have a really good time and feel safe and secure and know that Disney has their act together. And also think about if something were to go wrong on the ship, nothing did go wrong, it was incredible, uh, the four days that we had there. But if, if something were to go wrong, like let's pretend the engine breaks down, right? Engine breaks down, ship stops. Because of the pre-framing that they were able to do, uh, it would make us predisposed to just chill out if something that, that were to happen. It would make us predisposed to say, you know what? These guys got this. I mean, look at everything they did leading up to this cruise. These guys got this. It's no problem, right? So if you're Disney, you want that embedded in people's brain before they step foot on the cruise. So this is how Disney did it. All right, I'm going to tell you a few things that Disney did that like blew our mind that uh, pre-framed us so that we were predisposed to feel all those things. First thing that happened is we had this incredible packet show up in the mail. And this packet had a few things. One thing that it had that I personally loved is it had this little booklet that was full of all the details about the cruise. So I'm a, I'm a detail guy. I love checklists. And this little booklet was full of checklists. So it was the 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 travel packing checklist. It's like, here's what you want to make sure that you um, even bring on the plane. And, and here's what you want to make sure that you pack. And then here's the de very detailed itinerary. We're going to leave port at this exact time. We will arrive at this destination at this exact time, right? So everything was just laid out in super, super detail. This packet was personalized and customized to us. So it had our names all throughout it, our kids' names all throughout it. It had little vouchers and tickets for different activities that were super relevant to us and super relevant to the age of our kids at the time. Also in this packet was a terrific DVD. You know, you can imagine the movie that was on that DVD, the little video that really set the stage for all the amazing activities on the ship and how much fun the kids were going to have and uh, the great um, like daycare facility that they had on the ship so Julie and I could have a night out on our own and still ensure that the kids were taken care of. Right. And the wonderful imagery you can only imagine was in this DVD. There were two things, though, that blew our mind. The first thing that blew our mind was the fact that Mickey called the house. All right. Mickey Mouse called the house. Mickey Mouse called the house to leave a message for the girls, a personalized message telling the girls about how excited he was to meet them on the ship. Can you imagine how a six year old and a four year old would react? that to that mickey mouse calling their house like yeah their their brains like it exploded it was amazing they were so fired up so you know in the in the weeks and months leading up to this cruise they just you know they were, couldn't even contain themselves with their excitement all mostly because of mickey mouse called the house all right so that that was amazing that was a wonderful way to pre-frame us the second thing that happened and this happened right before like literally right before we stepped onto the ship or as we were stepping onto the ship. So we're there in the, in the facility that's the building that's right adjacent to the ship. So the ship is there docked. We're about to step onto the ship um, to start our, our four-day voyage, our four-day journey, four-day excursion on the ship. And, um, you know, we're, we're kind of milling around this building. Now it's, they make the announcement, it's time to board. So we're, uh, we're standing in line, but they make the line really fun. So that was not a big deal at all. So we're we're about to step onto the ship and there was a staff person there that leans over to me and says, um, sir, may I ask your family's last name? And I, and I said, uh, Thompson. She said, great. And as we step onto the ship, and this, this ship is like 1,200 feet long. This, it's ridiculous how big the ship is, the enormity of the ship. As we step onto the ship, over the ship's loudspeaker system, like the whole entire ship, they say over the loudspeakers, Disney would like to welcome the Thompson family, right? It's like reverberating throughout the ship. It was like, this is amazing, right? That what an experience. And so instantly big smiles on our faces. So, I mean, you talk about an amazing job to pre-frame and get us predisposed to be excited, have a good time, feel safe and comfortable and be fully prepared to shout from the rooftops how amazing this was. So that, like the point is the experience was already like, like in the books, like it was already baked, right? It was, it, it, it was done. Um, we were going to have a good time no matter what, based on everything that they did leading up 
to that. And we did. We, we had an incredible time. So I highly recommend the Disney boat. So then we get to, all right, so how do we apply this, right? How do we apply this to our business? Uh, this is a business-focused podcast. So how do we apply this to our business? Well, first thing that comes up for me is a philosophy that I have personally, a philosophy that we have in our company, and that is that we show up like no one else. So we, we show up like no one else. And when you show up like no one else, they cannot say no. The client, the prospect, they cannot say no when you show up like no one else. So Disney, they showed up like no one else. Bef- months before we stepped onto that ship, they were showing up like no one else. And we were not going to say no to you know, giving great recommendations and referrals, not going to say no to having a good time. right? So we, we were fully um, embracing everything they wanted us to embrace because of how they showed up. So find each and every way to show up like no one else. One way we do it with our company, any any um, agent who's considering joining our company, before they come in for the meeting to learn more about our company, so let's say they agree to say, yes, I'd like to see more about what you have to offer. We set up a meeting. The thing that we do before that meeting is we ask for their home address and we mail them this amazing packet of information, right? So we want them pre-framed before they ever step into that meeting, we want to demonstrate that we are like no one else with that packet of information that shows up at their home a day or two before they have the meeting. And I like nothing else than other than to, when they show up for that meeting, like the packet is that like they've clearly gone through it, right? Like the papers are kind of falling out of it and they bring they bring this packet with them and there's like stuff falling out. They, it's clear that they've gone through it and that packet itself you know, I won't go in detail what's what's in there, but the, the packet itself, you know, pretty much blows people's mind um, what we put in there because it's it's not just um, a, a handful of pieces of paper. Like there's some pretty fun, pretty amazing things that we put in that packet. So it, they are pre-framed and then predisposed to be very engaged during the meeting because of everything that we send them ahead of time, right? So we're not trying to do that work at the beginning of the meeting. We do the work ahead of the meeting. We talked about listings before and how this whole concept certainly applies to listings. So a few different ways that we do it in helping to attract listings, helping to win listings if we know where we're competing, certainly helping to have any conversation about a discount come off the table. One is through our phone interview. So we do a phone interview with the client before we go on. The listing consultation is something that we do. And that that alone signifies and demonstrates to the client that we really have our act together through the fact that we have the phone interview in the first place and then the questions that we ask. Then we send them to a website. So we have a website specifically designed for sellers who are considering using our company. It has walks them through all the benefits of working with our company, all the special things that we do in written form. There's a video there. So that that's also doing a whole lot of pre-framing. And then we get them a packet. So we get a packet into their hands ahead of time. So they get this um, digital experience with the website. They get a tangible experience with the packet. So then before the realtor ever even shows up for the meeting, these people are like, they're so into it. They're so jazzed up. They're so excited. And they're predisposed to work with this agent because of all the work that's been done ahead of time, right? So the philosophy is we, we want to start before we start. So start before we, we, you start. So what can you do to show up like no one else, right? What can you do to pre-frame? How do you want your people predisposed? You know, what is it that you want them predisposed to do? And once you get clear on that, then think about what can I do to pre-frame them so that they are predisposed to do those things? How can you show up like no one else so that they engage with you and do the exact things that you want them to do. Those are the questions to ask yourself, you know, based on these lessons. Basically, it's how can you be like Disney? I want you to ask yourself, how can I be like Disney? How can I be as good as Disney? There's a lot on the line. There's a I can help these clients in a big big way. How can I be like just like Disney, do just as good of a job as Disney in pre-framing so that my people are predisposed. All right, so hopefully this little lesson was helpful to you. Hopefully you enjoyed those couple examples. If you like things like this, what I want you to to do is uh, when you get the chance, go check out the website we've built called jointheleadingedge.com. So J-O-I-N, theleadingedge.com. It'll tell you all about a program we have that helps with things just like this that will help you out in your business, really help you to amp up 
uh, your business, amp up the kind of service that you deliver out to your clients. Um, it's really easy, simple, straightforward. It's a membership that we've built just for you. So go check that out. Join the leading edge. Dot com. In the meantime, I uh, hope you have an amazing week and thank you again so much for checking out the podcast. Bye.